If you've been keeping an eye on emerging tech over the last few years, you've probably heard of NFTs. Million dollar auctions and stories of people making life-changing money-flipping NFTs have attracted the attention of artists, collectors, and now with the resurgence of the metaverse, investors and brands. Although the NFT craze reached near critical mass in late 2020, early 2021, NFTs have been around for a while. In spirit, we have had NFTs for decades in the form of collectibles, artworks, and trading cards. Even the digital asset version has been with us since the beginning of the 2010s. It was the creation of the ERC721 and ERC1155 standards and the emergence of secondary marketplaces like OpenSea and Rarible that caused the explosion into mainstream adoption. In this article, we'll discuss the role of computer vision in NFTs and use GANs to create some NFT-worthy artwork. But before we get into that, let's briefly go over what is an NFT. NFT stands for non-fungible token, but that's not really helpful at all as the term fungible leaves a lot to be explained. In simple terms, it means replaceable or exchangeable. If something is fungible, it can be replaced easily. The phone or the laptop that you're currently reading this on is quite fungible. Let me put it like this, little boys. Replaceable. Replaceable. Sure, there might be some personal data, but the device itself is replaceable. You, on the other hand, are non-fungible. <laughs> replaceable? In computer science terms, NFTs are bits of data stored on a preferably decentralized blockchain digital ledger. NFTs act as a certificate of authenticity. What makes NFTs really promising is that the verification of authenticity doesn't explicitly require a centralized authority, just code. Ideally, NFTs cannot be changed or stolen, thanks to the cryptography that makes the blockchain secure. But there's always the human vulnerability vectors, like BAYC seed phrase phishing scams. Now, how blockchains work, how the owners of NFTs can enforce their proprietorship against right-click safe exploits, and the general utility of the tech is something we are not going to look into. As I see it, given an appropriate amount of time, the free markets will separate the wheat from the chaff. Generative Adversarial Networks, or GANs. A generative adversarial network, or a GAN, is a class of deep learning frameworks designed by Ian Goodfellow and his colleagues at the University of Montreal. Usually, GANs consist of two neural networks, a generator and a discriminator competing with each other in a game. The core idea of a GAN is the indirect training of the generator through the discriminator, which is responsible for telling how realistic an input is. But the discriminator network itself gets updated dynamically over time. This means that the generator is not trained to minimize the distance to a specific image, but rather to fool the discriminator. This enables the generator to learn in an unsupervised manner. But the problem with using GAN to create things is guiding the generation process. Let's say we somehow train a GAN to generate impeccable recreations of artworks like The Death of Socrates and Almond Blossoms. The problem now becomes how we reliably generate what we want to generate. You see, the generator network of GANs consists of an encoder and a decoder. The encoder network takes input images and learns their vector representation in the latent space. So, given a bunch of photographs of dogs and cats, a good encoder network will find two groups of vectors in the latent space corresponding to the two types of images. Now, if we simply sample random vectors from the encoder's latent space, we'll get unsatisfactory results. To properly leverage the generator network, we need to be able to guide the generation process effectively. So, when we want to generate an image of a cat, the decoder in the generator network knows where in the latent space it needs to sample from. This is where OpenAI's Clip revolutionized the world of generative artworks. Clip. Simply put, Clip can be thought of as a bridge between computer vision and natural language processing. Computer vision models aim to understand and see things like humans. And similarly, NLP models try to understand natural language in a manner similar to humans. But the two domains are intertwined. When we see a dog, we can label it as a dog. And when we read the word dog, the image of a dog pops up in our head. To connect images and text together, they need to be embedded in a vector space. Even if the idea of embeddings seem new to you, chances are you've probably worked with embeddings before. Ever created an image classifier? Well, every layer except the last layer creates embeddings for the image. Worked with text data? Well, you've definitely used some models like word to vec or Sentence Transformer to create vector embedding for text. Let's say you have an image of some apples and bananas. You can represent that as a point on a 2D plane like this. Now, this doesn't seem very useful, but we just embedded the information from the image in a simple two-dimensional vector space. If we wanted to include the information about the hand, 
we could add another feature and make a three-dimensional embedding for the image. In practice, we want to encode more information than just the presence or absence of objects. So encoders have way more dimensions. Think 100-dimensional hyperspheres. The clip model consists of two encoders, a text encoder to embed text into the latent space and an image encoder to embed images into the latent space. The combination of these two encoders enables Clip to learn generalized cross-domain text-image relationships. Once the Clip model has been trained, it can be used to guide the image generation process of GAN models. How Clip helps us generate images from prompts. The following represents the simplified architecture that we'll use later to generate images from prompts using the CLIP and GAN models like BigGAN or VQGAN. The idea is simple. We start with random values for the latent vectors from GAN's latent space to generate an image. This will usually generate a noisy image. This initial image will be passed to CLIP along with our text prompt. CLIP will generate a score representing how well this image represents the prompt. Using this score, the values of the latent vectors are updated using gradient descent and backpropagation as if they were weights in a neural network. Then the GAN uses the updated latent vectors to generate another image that will repeat the cycle over and over until Clip decides that the generated image sufficiently resembles the prompt. In simple terms, the GAN generates the image while Clip judges how well the image resembles the text prompt. Create art using GANs. There's a wide array of GANs you can use to create. In my experience, the easiest place to start is the Big Sleep package. Big Sleep is an easy to use wrapper module that makes Ryan Murdoch's combination of Big GAN and Clip accessible to everyone, even total newbies. Here are a few things I was able to muster up in a few days of tinkering. If you learned something in this article and want to get into computer vision, then check out our extensive computer vision courses here. Not only do we offer courses that cover state-of-the-art models like YOLO R, YOLO X, and Siam Mask, but there are also guided projects such as Pose, Gesture Detection, and creating your very own smart glasses. An interesting idea worth exploring is creating a video or GIF of the output images from the intermediate iterations, basically the whole creation process. Take a look at this GIF I created with the prompt, Castle of Glass. If Big Sleep doesn't quench your thirst for generative art, you can give VQGAN and CLIP a try. Where almost all big GAN generators are trained on the ImageNet dataset, there are VQGAN-based text-to-image generators trained on bigger, more diverse datasets such as WikiArt, SFlickr, etc. Architecture-wise, VQGAN leverages transformers to model more global dependencies in the images, allowing it to produce more coherent-looking images. Another noteworthy thing about the VQGAN and CLIP generation paradigm is the ability to dictate the style of the final output. Say you want an oil painting aesthetic, you can add that to your prompt and GAN will take that into account. Take a look at this small video I created using the quote from one of my favorite games, Shogun 2. Turning the snow pink in the absence of springtime, I create blossoms. Voila, you have the basic tools to create something worthwhile. Sure, it will take a whole lot of experiments and waiting, but if like me, you can't draw or create visual art on your own, this is a good way to create things. Unless you're rich enough for Ethereum layer one, I recommend you stick to minting your NFTs on cheaper layer ones like Solana or Terra. And if you really love the Ethereum security, go for layer two chains such as Polygon or Arbitrum. If you would like to develop this project, there will be a link in the description to the project store on augmented startups. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.